Ms. Cobo is out of town. Ms. Cohen? No, I need to say on the record for the minutes. Okay. Mr. Each is um, not on feeling his, well. He, he might show up. Ms. Estime Irvin? Present. Ms. Geimer? Here. Mr. McDermott? Here. Dr. Millian? Here. Dr. Moise is out of the country. He's excused. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Sanchez. Present. We have quorum. Okay. Very good. Can we have the Pledge of Allegiance, please? <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Each is here. <laughs> if you don't mind, pretty much it would be the two of you to move. Good evening, everyone. Rasha Kamo, CRA Director, North Miami CRA Director. Um, today before you is the proposed budget for the fiscal year 17-18. Um, as you know, traditionally the budget needs to be approved before September 30th for the new fiscal year, and because of Hurricane Irma, everything was pushed um, forward. Um, for this fiscal year, and in your packet, you have the budget book, which is the whole de all the details of our accomplishments and, and so on. So with the PowerPoint, I'm just going to briefly go through the big bullet points with you and answer any questions that you might have. Um, but everything is, even the spreadsheet that goes to the county is in your packet. Um, so for this fiscal year, the city TIF contribution is 3.31, 3,031,173,000. The county TIF contribution is 1,877,602. We have a carryover. These are projects that were already committed. They're underway that we have not finished. Um, there are 3,831,167. We always budget for interest on investments at 3,000. So our total revenue projected for this fiscal year is 8,742,942. Now at the bottom, and the, Mr. Reynolds had asked for us to show the difference. As you recall, our interlocal has a certain um, refund requirements. Since the inception of the CRA, we are required to pay back the county the west side of the TIF. So as you can see, out of the, I'm talking about the county first, but out of the county TIF, so right now they're telling us that our TIF is at 1.8 million, but we will be refunding them 1.2 million for the west side. So the east side where Solimia is, we're netting $600,949,000. That's our actual cash on hand that we will have. For the city side, as you recall, when the um, interlocal and the plan was approved in December, they had made a change in the, in the plan so part of it requires for us to refund 45% of the east side to the city. So the city's contribution is $3 million. Um, the current, based on the current TIF for the east side, Solimia, 45% is $368,000 that we have to refund to the city. Mm -hmm. So our net revenue for that contribution will be $2,662,809. Um, and 
So our budget, the month of net money we have to work with. Is 3.2 of new monies, 3.2 of new monies. Right. Now, remember the carryover, the 3.8 has, for instance, the 700,000 for the housing that we had allocated at towards the end of this fiscal year because the guidelines were just recently you know, developed and approved. We have some capital projects that we'll, I'll touch with you that we had already done, but we haven't actually finished them, like the Mocha Plaza, um, the Irons Manor Fountain. These were projects that were already approved for funding and they were multi-year. So this is like, this is the third year, this is the wrap up. All right, so a, f a little brief, you know, synopsis of our accomplishments. We, this year, we gave out $800,000 in commercial grants. Um, and I have this beautiful chart here showing you how much private match that we leveraged. As you recall, our larger grant programs ask for a match, a 50-50 match uh, traditionally. And we, we upgraded our um, grant guidelines to allow four different types of grants. So now we have you know, different types of grants that people can apply for. So looking at that, we, we leveraged a total for grant, commercial grants and improvements, 1.7 million, because we contributed 800,000 and the grantees put in $955,000 of private funding to do the rehab and so on. So I think it was very good and interesting for you to see how your investment, when you're approving a grant, how the business works and how interesting it is. Um, we commissioned the design master plan for the train station at Northeast Second Avenue major corridor finally. Um, we are now about to negotiate with the whoever the the selection process was through procurement, so we can't speak about who it is and so on and so forth. But next month, we will be bringing it to you for approval for the contract to do the master plan. We implemented the market positioning plan. As you recall, that was part of the CRA plan that was approved by you all. And part of it had a market positioning plan, the branding, the marketing, the new look and feel, and all these other projects that we're doing as part of that. Um, we partner with the city's housing department. As you recall, we are funding half a housing person and we worked on, we have a new set of guidelines for single family rehab. And of course, we successfully amended the North Miami CRA plan and it was approved at the Board of County Commissioners in December 2016. These are just a few of our accomplishments. There's many more in the book, but I didn't wanna, you know, you've been here at, at the outset, you've been with me every month when we're presenting these projects. So you pretty much know most of these of our accomplishments. All right, so the proposed expenditures for this year is as follows. Our administrative expenses will be still at 4% of the total budget and that covers really administrative costs, um, our audit, our annual audit that we have to go through. We have to pay the county a 1.5% stipend for admin fee in addition to the refund. Um, certain you know, administrative costs and also um, paying for the staff, meaning finance, budget, public works to provide support services to the CRA as needed. Um, our total operating expenses are at 1,064,300. That covers our attorney's fees, that covers all our other consulting and, and capital projects that we have to do. I created a separate line item for total refund to taxing authorities. I, I took it out of the operating so people can see how much money we're actually giving back to the taxing authorities, meaning the county and the city. So for this fiscal year, we'll be giving $1,645,000 back to the county mainly and to the city, which counts for 19% of our budget. Um, for capital projects, capital improvement projects, it's 5,674,000. That inclu includes this year, I'm asking for us to fund $1 million worth um, for commercial grant applications as opposed to 800,000 because as you recall we ran out of money this fiscal year kind of early and there are a lot of new businesses that are interested in coming into the, the downtown into the city so I wanted to make sure we had enough. Also we're doing a pilot program for $100,000. It's a film incentives program that the city, um, the city itself drafted and we're partnering with them and it is it goes hand in hand with our amended plan because our amended plan, as you recall, had found that film, broadcast, and music were a, a, a market that we have already in the city, but we don't capitalize on and we, we don't work with these businesses. So um, this one was actually, um, it was a great idea that, that we worked with Councilman Galvin. And so the, what we're funding, the $100,000 of the pilot program is to fund a partial reimbursement for film 
um, if they're doing any films. So it's an incentive. You're going to come here, you're going to use a restaurant, a dry cleaners, a location, uh, an editing area. As long as it's within the CRA, there are geographic boundaries, you are eligible to apply and get reimbursed 30% um, of up to $50,000 for that. We're doing it as a pilot program for now, um, like I said, and if it, it is successful, we'll roll out something a little bit more permanent. Um, the other parts of the capital improvement program include not only the housing program that we talked about, it's for, oops, let's put it on the table. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so what was I saying? Oh yeah, the, cap the various. So we have pending projects, Sasso Pool, Mocha Plaza, Irons Manor, um, Fountain and the West Dixie Green Trail. These are all projects that, like I said, we had already approved. We had to go through a design phase. We had to go through bidding phase and so on. So for instance, the Sasso Pool has already been designed. You've pretty much seen the drawings, but we had to put it out to bid for the contractor to be hired. We're at that phase now. We're waiting on procurement to provide us with the contractor for us to bring it to you to approve. Mocha Plaza, we had hired, as you recall, Leo A. Daly. They had done a presentation of the proposed design. They're working on the engineering plans now. Once all of that's done, procurement will put it out to bid, and uh, we hope to be able to bring it back to you, you know, when it's done, but the, the renovations for the Mocha Plaza will happen after the Art Basel event, so like around January, February, for them to start doing that. Irons Manor Fountain, pretty much same thing. The only difference for that, um, I don't know if anybody realized it, but that fountain was designated a historic so that kind of put some delay in how we were gonna renovate it and how we needed to work. And then we, now, we have to go to the county historic board to get approval on how we're gonna renovate it and so on. Yes, sir. And is uh, Jeff Garner still in charge of that? Yes, he is our pro CRA city project manager for all our capital projects. And the West AC Green Trail also, as you know, it's a large project and so on. So those are projects that we already had on the books that we need to wrap up this fiscal year and, and get them built. Um, this year we're initiating the Liberty Gardens renovation that was also in the downtown master plan. You will see a drawing in your, in your budget book of what it's supposed to be. I, I, I don't know if anybody's familiar with Liberty Gardens is. It's right here on 125th Street. It looks like a little concrete plaza right there. It has like a flag on the wall, a mural on the wall. So in your budget book you'll see the proposed rendering. And I will tell you what page is it on. It is on page 7. And that's the one that we will be working on um, as a new project for this fiscal year. All right, we talked about the film incentives. Um, this year, again, as part of our plan, we're gonna be focusing on creating a comprehensive film, music, and broadcast plan to find ways to attract those type of businesses here, those type of um, you know, musicians and editing and so on and so forth to develop that kind of corridor. And finally, Again, these are just a few of the things that we do that we plan on doing next year, but it, um, these, I felt these were very important for us to comment on. We're gonna rehab at least 59 single family homes, and then we're gonna continue working on other initiatives for multifamily rehab and development and so on, and eventually kick off a, a new first time home buying program. I, I, um, so last, this fiscal year, which, and last fiscal year, I apologize, last fiscal year, we had approved a $700,000 um, contribution towards that. This fiscal year, we're com contributing 450,000. So we're putting those two together and we're re rehabbing 59 single family homes that are within the CRA boundary. And one last reminder, our interlocal has a benchmark and one of them is we needed to rehab 70 low income units within the next five years. So this is us kind of meeting that requirement right away to allow us to be more creative and find more opportunities to help our community. All right, and that is it. Do you have any, do you have any questions? Yes, the CRE had something in like 2008 and 2009, and then you know it happened around that when the market um, had crashed and so on. So the prices were very high, and some of those properties are actually underwater right now as a result. Um, we plan on bringing them back to the board because one of the things that they had in the original plan was they were not forgivable loans, they were loans. The new guidelines that were adopted by the city just for the rehab, for instance, says that they're a forgivable loan. If you've lived in the house, it's your primary home for seven years, it becomes a forgivable loan. The original guidelines that the CRA had before said in 10 years, 
the loan is due with the 3% um, interest, right, Mr. Attorney? That is correct. So that's the reason why we're partnering with the city's housing department because they not only have the expertise, they know who needs the help, but they can help us make sure that whatever it is that we're providing is appropriate for the community. Ms. Estime? You made the second? No. Oh, Mr. Pastor. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. The second item for you will be the Chinatown Cultural Arts and Innovation District Master Plan. Um, while the gentlemen are setting up, let me just give you, I'll sit back and then give you a reminder of how we got here. Right. Is the mic still on? Hello? Yes. Okay, as you recall, um, the city council had designated the Northwest 7th Avenue corridor from 119th Street to 135th Street as the Chinatown Cultural Arts and Innovation District. Um, after that, the, a delegation went to China and met with several parties in Beijing, Shanghai, and Tianjin. And part of the, the, um, the reason why we went is, one, we saw that there was an untapped market here with the Chinese investment. One, because FIU has a campus in Tianjin, China. Um, they've been there for 12 years. We actually have Chinese nationals that live, rent and own property in the city um, because they're students and so on and so forth. Um, we found out also that a, at least 30% of the trade that comes in through the Port of Miami comes from Asia and then there's an untapped market there as well. And also the Greater Miami Visitors Bureau had brought us some data showing that we do have a large percentage of Chinese tourists that come here. However, they come through. They go to Miami Beach and then they go to Orlando and so on, but they don't stay here and that's an untapped market. Um, after we did that, we put out to bid um, to create a Chinatown conceptual master plan. And through that, as you recall, we had hired Keith and Schnars as the consulting team to create this, um, this conceptual master plan and they are all here. And afterwards, I guess they'll introduce themselves. Um, so that took about a year. Through that process, we had created a steering committee, which is comprised of Ms. Carol Geimer as one, a resident in that area, also an advisory committee representative. Um, a business owner on Northwest 7th Avenue, Mr. Jeff Wendezier uh, from Randy's Restaurant, myself, Tanya Wilson-Sigler from the city's planning department, a representative from the Beacon Council, and the, the provost of FIU, um, Mr. Noel, um, and a Chinese national um, from the American Datang um, to provide the Chinese expertise that we needed, like our cultural consultant to do that. Throughout, um, we, we, did so we did two community meetings. We had one meeting with the steering committee to talk about the framework, what we wanted to see, and so on and so forth. And we also, am I doing your presentation for you? No, no you're, you're doing great. Okay. I think you're doing wonderful. <laughs> no, I just want to give like, remind everybody of like where we are and, and what, what we've been doing. And then, so after we had the meeting with the steering committee, we had our first community workshop, which was March 1st at the Joe Celestine Center. Um, we were very pleasantly surprised to see that it was a full house. There was a mix of residents, Chinese investors, and people interested in understanding what it is that we were doing. Then we had the second meeting, community workshop, um, to show the renderings and designs and to get some comments and some feedbacks. Um, so throughout all of that, um, the manager, my, uh, myself, uh, Mr. Sori, and even one of the meetings I had invited um, our chairman, Mr. McDermott, to attend with me, we've been entertaining a lot of visits and meetings from Chinese investors. Um, the last one was the China Chamber of Com the chairman of the China Chamber of Commerce on yeah. textile. Um, they have a membership of 3,300. They were on their way to a conference. They were holding a trade show uh, in Toronto in August. Um, and on their stop, they came and they wanted to understand what it is that we're trying to do and so on and so forth. So it was very positive. Um, the feedback is, is, is very positive. Um, and like I said, we've been working with Keith and Schnars and their consultants to prepare it. One of the things that they did was they had also hired um, Fishkind and Associates, which is a, a financial um, planning group and they do analysis. So they did a feasibility analysis on like, would this work? What would, would you need it? What would work? And also for an EB5 uh, regional center. 
um, because I don't know if everybody's familiar, but a lot of Chinese, a lot of investments, foreign investment comes through EB-5 visas. And looking at the project, would it meet the threshold? Would it be something that, you know, we would get passed through immigration? Because really immigration is the one that process those things. And also if it would be something that would be interesting to foreign investors and so on and so forth. Um, so without further ado, um, this is our project manager, Mr. Albert Jacob, and Hello. he will introduce his team. Absolutely. Uh, good evening to the committee. Uh, my name is Albert Jacob from TV Stars. I have with me my colleagues, uh, sorry, Bruce, Kirk, Brad, and our consultant, Bruce, uh, sorry, Carly Hu, who is our consulting uh, architect of the project. Um, I, uh, gosh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there we go. That's what I was waiting okay. for. Really. Yeah, to <laughs> set you up. All right, so uh, in um, February of 2016, a certain area that is along Northwest 7th Avenue from, 120, from uh, 119th Street to 135th Street was designated as the proposed site for this project. This was due to the amount, the large amount of interest that was received uh, from Chinese developer, developer companies who want, were interested in properties within the project area. And of course, the vision that North Miami had for creating this particular area as a commercial uh, area with focus on developing perhaps some Chinese, uh, with an emphasis on Chinese style and architecture. Now, uh, I would like to Briefly, there. This is I-95 running north-south right here. That you see over here. This is Northwest Seventh Avenue, and I, it's not very clear on the screen here. But you see this red boundary. That's pretty much the area of the project. 119th Street runs down here, and 135th Street runs up there. The total area we're looking at over here is about 93 acres. So we got. We, you know, this particular area also w was selected because of the, you know, the opportunity to build existing multicultural context and the possibility of creating a traditional, um, a project with traditional urbanism principles in mind. And of course, because of the, um, the guidelines that we could um, uh, adopt uh, in a new project, especially uh, like a Chinatown which has uh, uh, an emphasis on style and architecture. Also, uh, the transformation of, of, of uh, Northwest 7th Avenue. Now, I think Russia did an <coughs> excellent job of explaining <laughs> of why, where, why we are in this location and why this theme, but I'll just briefly touch upon it. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the reasons, of course, is because it's a major north-south commercial street with uh, easy access to an uh, I-95 and an important uh, transportation system. And of course, within this area, the transportation system is, is, has three major intersections, and of course, they plan the planned uh, improvements to Grattany Parkway. And it also supports the city's vision, you know, to position itself as a regional center. Now, the widest theme, um, uh, the graduation, uh, first of all, in this particular area, there are, there's a large amount of students also who graduate from international hospitality and tourism students. And uh, there was a s uh, successful stimulation of interest by Chinese investors. Uh, a lot of the other reasons Russia covered, uh, there was a delegation here from uh, Shanghai where they were looking at properties. Uh, and uh, of course, um, you know, uh, before we came onto the project, there was a predetermination of the direction that we were going to go in. Um, Russia, if there's anything else that I've left out, please let me know. <laughs> now, the, I'm using this map over here because, uh, I, because I just want to give you an idea of the area that we are talking about, okay? This is the entire city right there. We are talking about this little orange strip over here that's not south which is I-95 and the area that is in, in this part 
right there. That is, not, that is 7th Avenue. So uh, with our study, before we start our conceptual master plan, we have to prepare a, a solid uh, ground rule and do some studies for what is existing and where we can take this project. So we were looking at, you know, the influx of, uh, of course, due to this project, there would be an influx to, of more residents to this area. Well, when I say area, I mean the surrounding areas, obviously, because we're looking at this project as a major commercial hub. And of course, the, uh, you know, the boost it would give to the economy, to the people living in this area, an opportunity to increase the building heights uh, um, in, in from uh, 119th to 135th, and al also the opportunity to create a smart city, uh, like things like automatic vehicles and also monitoring the sea level rises uh, due to extreme weathers. Uh, we would like to also tell you that in the proposed conceptual master plan uh, matches the existing LDRs. Now, uh, we had received a lot of input from the community, of course, that beforehand that said that the area was lacking what is called a downtown, a sense of place. Uh, they didn't have uh, a place that they could, was just exciting and, and that normally, uh, you know, usually other cities call a downtown area. So what we used was we used what is called the vibrant community four element in order to start the project. Okay, there are four parts to these elements. What is called the government and organization, which is basically putting all your zoning codes and permit process in, in place. Then the socioeconomic, the heart of the programming, which is the economic side of the project. And the funding and the market analysis, because we have to study what is there and how much needs to be done and what, where we can take the project. And of course, the design part of it, and that is the built and natural design, because that's where we have uh, all the consultants and the professionals that would be hired for the project. Now, so what do we do? The, through community participation, we first, they uh, established a steer steering committee, and the steering committee was consisted of members of the, uh, the city, uh, uh, residents of the city and members of the CRA board, and of course, uh, some of the city staff. Now, the first uh, steering committee met in January of this year, and uh, after that, there were two other public engagement workshops that were conducted. One was in March, and the other one was in May. Uh, opinion surveys were also collected for the project, and uh, uh, the re residents could also contact the city through an interactive website that was created uh, where they could, you know, uh, register their opinions and what they felt was important. Now, before we started the project, you know, there was an in initiation workshop in January of this year where we studied the, what were the opportunities to create conceptual master plan and what were the items that we were looking at in order to create this conceptual master plan. We st uh, studied the emphasis of business and education, aesthetics, circulation, the market, urban design, and the events and activities. Now all these items, uh, although over here are shown as, as headings, uh, they have been detailed further in the report. Uh, the guiding principles for the project, which were the uh, aspirations for the goals for to create the master plan were, were divided into two tiers. In the first, there was a first tier and the second tier. In the first tier, we looked at prosperity and vibe and vibrant communities. And in the second tier over here, we studied the aesthetics, the art, art artistic part of the project. And also there was an, an additional element that was added to it which is the celebration of water. Uh, uh, before we move forward with the design, we had to see what we had out there. We had to study the existing conditions. We had, uh, you know, field for, uh, pictures taken of the existing setbacks, the signage, the transit, and we had to study also what utilities were uh, existing and available to us on site. So what do we have um, after all our studies? We know we have approximately 92 acres of land, uh, approximately 16 block area, 
and if you subtract from this the area, you had approximately 64 acres. And besides that, you know, we had 36 rooms of hotel and 22 bus stops and so on and so forth. Now, of course, the, an additional element to this was the conceptual master plan that was going to be created had to be done based on a, a market analysis. And this market analysis was done for us by Fish Kind and Associates, which Rasha men mentioned. Uh, in an overview, we were looking at a capacity summary of a hotel and living accommodation su summary. So we studied the amount of retail that we could add, office space, and hotel area. So we know we need to add about 1.4 acres of hotel, 2.2 and a half acres of retail, and about 1.7 acres of office space. So I'm, I'm going to very briefly touch upon the market analysis that was done by our, our consultant, Fishkind and Associates. And, uh, you know, there is all, all, there are details of his study in the report, uh, but I'm going to very briefly touch upon this. Uh, he looked at, of course, the first step in evaluating the project and studying whether he had the three yeses for the project. One was local government the overarching the land use plan, and the third one was the financing part of it. And he found that all three were a yes. Now, he studied also uh, the trade dollars that were coming in from the, the port, which was over one million TEUs, and the amount of d dollars that were coming in with, uh, from all the uh, uh, trade that was coming in from China and into the port of Miami. Uh, he also studied the, the dollar figures that were coming in as far as tourism were concerned. And he used examples of city place, uh, creative village, and uh, then created a summary of what, what we found needed. We needed about 1.7 million square feet of office space and about 860,740 square feet of commercial development. Of this, uh, uh, if you look at the bottom center, and you will see that uh, the taxable value of properties would be about 639.8 million, generating about 4.7 million in uh, tax revenue. Uh, the, this is something that Rasha mentioned also. Uh, it's the EB5 uh, um, investment in regional center. It's an option as a finance source for the project. Yeah. It was also studied, looked into for the project. And r at this stage, uh, I would like to introduce our architect, um, Carl Lee Hu, and he's going to take you into uh, some of the details of uh, how the layout for the conceptual plan. Uh, thank you, uh, Alba. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Carl Lee Hu, principal Charles for Lee Hu Partners, the, the architect of this project. And I um, thank him for his uh, good uh, introduction to the project. Uh, what I, I have 10 minutes, so I, I want to be brief. So if anything that I um, didn't get to address, uh, please bring back the, uh, the question and answer. Okay, uh, I have um, actually five diagrams that synthesize what uh, Albert Jacob were talking about throughout our process of master planning. Number one, is to record in the way that uh, graphically understandable the aspiration of the community uh, in doing this uh, uh, Chinatown, to me, I think it's kind of a nickname, but I think the real name and the more descriptive name for us is Culture, Art, and Innovation District. That's what's what you know, I personally base my inspiration from. Um, so the, 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 the idea is to record the aspiration of the community and fish out the spirit of it, which is the, the ingenuity of, of culture, of, you know, of the community culture and also of the Eastern culture, namely the ingenuity doing more with less uh, and the love of life and the, uh, the, the self-expression artistic but the experience has to be authentic. Um, and the, the next thing is we utilize 
two aspects of our design in creating a, I call it a good bones for the district. Um, in in a Hindu proverb, there's a saying that say, uh, science walks on earth and poetry fly above earth. So if, if you see this, you, if you go deeper into our detail, our, our final report that uh, Albert described, you will see it reflect the master plan for the uh, innovation district in two levels. One is have to do with poetic ideas, attribute, and the other one have to do with scientific attribute. So, so the first one is the culture DNA that we that we detect from the spirit of the project, and by talking to citizens and and people of the community, uh, and we we identify. There's a, that uh, there's a, a culture influence of Haitian culture, uh, China culture, and also the culture of the motherland, which is America. So we, we base on those concepts, and then we consider the urbanism and architecture of the district that base on Four dynastic tradition of architecture uh, that the district is divided into four sub district and each of them from travel from north to south no from south to north you will go to four main dynastic tradition uh, from south to north and uh, and also I I got a feedback a good feedback <coughs> from a a Chinese uh, uh, authority of, of, of China culture, they said that beside four dynastic tradition, you ought to consider there are around 36 regional cuisine. <laughs> so I think that also is also another kind of uh, poetic uh, attribute for the project. Uh, we, in, in terms of scientific consideration for the project, uh, we take the stormwater management requirement of the district and try to address it globally instead of letting each uh, developer have to deal with the stormwater district by him, himself, or herself, we propose a district-wide comprehensive water uh, management. Uh, so it alleviates the future developer of property owner from having to deal with that. But while doing that, we create the water uh, retention area into a system of lakes and canal, but also green space, having Central Park and then down to the Pocket Park, and also as a, as a barrier between the residential and the commercial. Uh, and I, I think this is this is a very um, exciting um, new idea, uh, and so far I think it, it, it seemed to work pretty good. Uh, we did a calculation of the of the land use, and in the master plan, as you clearly see, we we use about 16 percent of the land for water retention. Uh, on the average of a typical project depends on the design, it consumes up to 30%, 35% of the land. So you, right away you see the efficiency increase, but also the other thing is that the, the main benefit is it creates a, a great amenity, you know, in terms of water retention and public spaces. I think it's, it's quite exciting. <coughs> so so this is another layer that that combine all the design principles that we described you know, in the previous board to become this. So you see it reflects a, a density and the spirit of, of, of community like North Miami and, and, and you know, combination with, with uh, Chinese a, a kind of Eastern energy. So we, um, we propose a, a series of gateways and pocket park and life sustaining alley that have energies and, and you know commerce and uh, and also addressing the the, the storm water and uh, open space problem this uh, 
this view that you see here is looking uh, from the South Gateway to the north with, uh, with I-95 on, on the east on the right-hand side. Uh, and again, even though... I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt because I'll just add that the, when you're looking at it, as you recall, with the new LDR and the new zoning, on the west side of 7th Avenue, you can go up to only 55 feet as yes. a buffer to the residential. And on the east side of 7th Avenue, and this is I-95, you can go up to 20 stories. Right. Okay, so that's why when you're looking at it, you see the high rises are yeah, on the east side. This is this in compliance with it. Uh, thank, thank you, Rasha. That's a, that's a good note. Uh, Thank Mr. Each for that. So you, you see the, the, the Seven Avenue, actually we, we propose to rename it Innovation Boulevard. So we'll be having uh, you know, a lot of cool things, for example, mm -hmm. sail driving. Okay, uh, this, this view is um, a, a nighttime view and it look uh, the other way. It looked from north to south and in one of the workshop, public workshop, we pick up a comment, a really ex excellent comment that give uh, genesis to this idea is that uh, the people, they want to propose parking structure at the north and south end of the district to minimize the number of, of car per visitor to have to engage into the district to reduce traffic congestion. So you see there the, the hotel gateway that have parking deck that has about nine level of parking on top of which is a conference and hotel, hotel and conference center. And th the inspiration come from one of the trip that I came down here and uh, uh, Tanya uh, got up really ugly to see the museum and mm -hmm. also to see the enchanted forest. So that, that I, we spent about half a day there. And that, that gave the inspiration for the the Gateway Hotel, which is a, an enchanted forest uh, that enclosed a historic, um, traditional Chinese architecture that become a hotel and and uh, and, uh, and conference center. This is the, the up up close the shot of, of the, the hotel and the, the gateway to it. So below it has the it has parking nine level of parking and above it has a multi story. Uh, um, hotel and conference center, but also it, a lot, it, it is a screen enclosure, so it doesn't have air, air conditioning, but the people can g get inside and engage, and it, it, it's, it's what I call a vivarium of, of, of sorts, just like an enchanted forest with observation towers. And this view is at the uh, Central Park, looking north, you see on the left-hand side, the west side, there's a lower building to comply with, with the current zoning. But on the east side, parallel to I-95, that allow good to go up to 200 feet. So that, that and it, the water retention become a, a gathering place that, that, that the, water, the water will be circulated as a, as a system of lakes and canal that also defy urban spaces. This is the view that from on top of the, the vivarium and, and, the, and the hotel balcony, you look down into, into the, uh, in this way, you could look south along the, uh, on access with the Innovation Boulevard, and you see the south gateway beyond. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that is uh, the part of the architecture and urban design uh, of my presentation, so I just There's sure. a part about, can you go back to the other one? Go back? Okay. Yeah, this one. Okay. Um, that is Northwest 7th Avenue, as you, you can see in it. If you're paying attention, you can see now it's two lane. Um, as you recall, FDOT came and said that they're starting to do a road diet, and Northwest 7th Avenue is on their plan. So it kind of worked out for us that they are planning to make the sidewalks wider, they're going to have on-street parking, and they're going to do a road diet by eliminating a, a car on each side. 
So Ka has already taken that and, and translated it into the presentation that you see. This is not something that we're, you know, it's coming out, out of left field. We're actually talking to them and they're, they're, they're gonna be working with us, meaning the city and the CRA, but as they're doing the road diet so that the streetscape and all that matches um, as we're moving forward. Yeah, that, that's 7th Avenue North yep. South, right? Okay, now what's to the east and to the west of the, what is that, a, a lake or water feature or what kind of much like the... Yeah, that's those that's are the water features that they were talking about, or the water features they were talking about earlier. So the idea is, just to touch, again, I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> the idea is, he was talking about the stormwater management and the landscape, right? Normally, a developer, when you come in, you have setback requirements. The water feature, and he said it's about 30% of the property yeah, goes so into landscape. With this model, the whole point of the innovation is that if we do the water feature as part of the, the infrastructure and the landscape, the property owner can now build um, zero lot with no setback requirement and as high as he needs to. Um, on the east side, like I said, uh, thanks to you, it's to 20 stories. But on the west side, it's five stories, 55 feet. So when you're looking at in terms of investment for somebody, if they're not doing the east, you want them to also redevelop the west side, you have to allow them to maximize the property, the lot size as best as they can. So the innovation aspect that Ka um, came up with is to create these water features in the parks that we would cover and then, then the, prop the developer would just focus on his project. The, uh, additionally, additionally, if you if you look around the convention method is that if you want to de develop uh, a commercial project, you have to worry your old little hall with jingling a fence around, you know, to keep rainwater from you know, to escape to other property. In this case, we propose that it's going to be globally by district, the whole district. So that as property owner, you come in, you don't have to worry about that. And 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 at the at the storm water it's going to be designed as a district. How many blocks are we looking at? Sixteen blocks. Sixteen. 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 No, but I mean for the water feature. Oh. The, the water feature is only, um, uh, I think it's one block in. One, but one it, block. Yeah. Uh, and 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 uh, the thing is is about that is that uh, keep in mind uh, we we dealing with with. I mean, you I, know. I, I, I think it's, I? A, it's a nice looking concept. I mean, I, to me, it looks just stuck a little bit bigger than one block. Okay. Mm -hmm. But but also another awesome. thing that I, I also want to emphasize: if you if you lo look at our rendering, <laughs> all of our building was built was put, shown on top of a, a plinth, so it allowed the city to set the new buildable elevation above the existing elevation now. All yeah. the new building come in could be higher, you know, like three feet higher than, 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 than before. Because south of you, Miami only raised their buildable elevation by two and a half feet. So, I like seeing this uh, over on the east side when we have this town hall meeting where we have the city manager project. I have a question for you um, concerning our master plan, which we try to change. Um, we're on multi use, which this is going to be multi use. three or more components for multi-use, and we try to change it to two, but it's just three or more. And, um, you know, I thought for sure that on the east side of Northwest 7th Avenue, we would go residential. Well, I understand that there's no residential on that side of the site because it's a park strip, and you go up the I-95 corridor, you go up to Annapolis, what have you. You, you see residential off of I-95, that's yeah. valuable property. Why we don't want to have it there, that, I think that's absolutely preposterous. But currently now in the um, master plan, uh, we try to change it on the planning commission to two or more uses, or two two uses or more, but a minimum of two. What they want, they set it at a minimum of three. Now we have commercial, residential, and business would be the three. This shows only two here. I, You're going to have either uh, commercial or, and business, but not, not that third component. And I, we got to change that land use order. Yeah, I, 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 I think I think you made a good point. I think but throughout the design change. process, the, our team has pretty intense internal conversation, including the economists, fish kind associates, and we, we share your view. 
I, I think I think, but it, it it's up to to the city to make that that you know kind of change of policy to exclude residential. So right right now, the land use ordinance states where. So let me let me help you with that. We've already started having that conversation because it, I, I don't know if you know. We've already started having that conversation because the councilman for that district is the one that was that Adamant want about, about it. Your, your comp plan that you're talking about, you have to change it every seven years. This is a 15 or more year project. It'll come back up again. And at that time, we will, we will be working with them to, to get that done. But at, right now, we have to look at what, you ha what they have. They can always bring it back. But we, he was we adamant. Can do, we can do a text change to the comp. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But and, and, and he's the one and, and, and that. Bob the longest journey starts with the first step. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, 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 you know, this is a nice plan. Yeah. But if it's going to be successful, you've got to have all these parts in order. And I, and I think that's something. Yeah, actually, you know, to, to piggyback to what you just said, I think if you look at uh, south of you, you have Miami, right? You have Pico Avenue. So if let's say if a new business come into this area, and if you look at you know the cost to lease per square foot in Frico Avenue, and if you go here and look, you know it, it's like a dollar, you know to a dime. You know what I mean? And so you you if you do your your zoning right, you would be a tremendous alternative for business and professional. That is a and nice Florida, 143rd to 119th Street to be the future of this city. Mm -hmm. This is the way. I, I, I'm, I'm yeah. a proponent of what you're saying, yeah, Mr. Right. Town, but I, I just see the, the roadblocks and the stupidity of not having the residential off of I-90. That doesn't make sense. I mean, the concept is beautiful. Uh, we'll, we'll make sure to comment and, and bring your concerns to the, to the councilman. To sure my comments are heard mm -hmm. loud. Well, it's after tomorrow. Maybe it's next week, Tuesday. But yeah, yeah, can we continue? I'm sorry, because I know we're running out of time <laughs> and we have other items. But go ahead. Thank you so much, Ka. I'm sorry to. Uh, thank you, Carl. Uh, really appreciate uh, your presenting the conceptual master plan. Uh, moving ahead um, very quickly is uh, what in order to achieve uh, this conceptual master plan, what we had to do is we have to put certain guidelines in place. In this particular case, we were looking at some guidelines as far as how do you comply, setting up rules of how you are making an application to do a project, and then the style of the architecture has to be addressed. And also, um, we have to set up guidelines for every area. Um, uh, as far as the future is concerned, I think there's a very iconic uh, structure that uh, Carr has designed at the corner of 125th and 7th and 135th and 7th uh, that will act as gateways to the, to the project. And I get, think gateways to a commercial project are very important. Um, this was um, outlined uh, very nicely by Rasha, but so I'm going to go over it very quickly. <laughs> the plan, 120, 119th Street, 135th Street, everything that you see in blue over here are 200 feet height, 55 feet as far as the red is concerned, and, yellow, and all the yellow is 35 feet. Mm -hmm. The yellow blocks that you see here are the parking garages within the project. And as far as zoning is concerned, everything that you see in blue over here will be zoned commercial, and the yellow will, will be part of the office. Now, as far as the themes are concerned, we have to encourage pedestrian traffic. We have to make sure there is enough uh, connectivity. There are sufficient street trees in the, within the project. And if we want to really make it a relevant uh, 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 project that has wonderful uh, atmosphere, uh, we also have to try and get the overhead lines uh, relocated underground. Uh, you see some examples here, some contemporary and some more traditional examples of architecture. Uh, we had to set up guidelines as far as building organization is concerned within each property. Uh, we, we have uh, an important factor is 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 you letting the the owners of the properties you go up to what is called zero rock lines as uh, Kai has it, had explained, um, and creating internal courtyards and also establishing a focal point. Uh, enclosures, connectivity is also pedestrian and vehicular from property to property. 
And as far as enclosures are concerned, enclosures within projects are very important. They are called uh, either sky wells, wire, uh, sky wells or courtyards. Now, uh, uh, as far as the style and arch of architecture is concerned, there are some traditional styles, there are some contem contemporary styles that address the roofs, well, what you should do with the roofing, how the, you, do sh you can add decoration as far as uh, the roofs are concerned, and also visual variety is very important because you need that sensory stimulation because people, when they uh, uh, visit a project, they remember the sensory stimulation and they can't return to the project. But as far as the roof guidelines are concerned, uh, you know, the variation in, in, in the sculpture, you have sculptural roofs, uh, you have flat roofs with articulated parapets, and then you have another principle which is called touching the sky. In the more traditional uh, architecture, you see the roofs bending for upwards, and here's a contemporary example of that same, ro same roof going uh, uh, upwards. Uh, the tops of buildings have to be addressed, the windows make them as as, as different as possible with different shapes and sizes to add interest. And as far as the entrances are concerned, make sure that when you design entrances to these buildings, they are recessed so that they get some sense of emphasis from the, from the street level. Uh, in, as far as the Chinese landscape is concerned, uh, if you do decide to have a, a garden with this particular character, then what you have to make sure is you follow these rules. You have a surrounding wall that acts as a background. Lighting, as everyone knows, uh, you know, is an important aspect. I've shown some uh, traditional lighting type, Chinese type of lighting over here, but I think lighting, you know, has to be addressed. And signage, signage also is a very important aspect of creating very interesting environments within, within the project. Uh, colors uh, have importance uh, as far as a, uh, the uh, Asia is concerned. Uh, there are certain, r the red color is the most popular color. Yellow, co uh, yellow of course, corresponds to, to earth and royalty. Green is money and wealth. And some of these uh, associations are quite international. Um, now, within the wonderful uh, conceptual master plan that Kai has created, we have also uh, approached, uh, we have to also take a look at the public spaces within the project and how they could be addressed. So you, I'm gonna show you some conceptual sketches over here of how we have designed some of the uh, public spaces. Of course, these are con very conceptual without a program, so we're just kind of trying to give you a view of what it could look like. Uh, here's another view of that big circular pond below. Uh, and a walkway above looking down. Uh, and these are one of the intersections where we can create street trees, as I said earlier, were, are very important in the project, and they add a lot of character to the project. Uh, decorative elements you could have in certain corners. Some could be traditional, some could be contemporary. They all don't all have to be traditional, or you could emphasize a different culture based on which corner you are at. And then walkways, uh, you know, crosswalks the, within the city. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, the um, yeah, car had explained uh, uh, within his uh, master plan the concept of a canal, uh, and the canal that he was talking about was much wider. But we just wanted to show you an example of the, if the canal were only 20 foot right away, it can still be achieved. Now this is Northwest 7th uh, Avenue running, looking either north or south. You see it's in this particular section, you will see uh, medians with large trees in the middle, uh, lighting elements that follow any character that you desire, and street trees. On one side, on the other side, you will see a promenade that is created for pedestrians between two, a row of two trees. Uh, the plan, this is basically a plan view of the, of the same project. Here's the promenade that I was talking about with trees on either side so people can walk up and down, crossroads with pavers, median with trees, and a sidewalk. Important to have sidewalk on both sides. And to slow down the traffic, it is also very important to have parking on both sides of the street. It's, 
Sorry? And this is part of, this matches what the FDOT smart plan? Yes, absolutely. As far as the right of way so is concerned, this matches all the dimensions of uh, the FDOT. FDOT smart plan. So we'll buy it if you're doing uh, this is an example of another internal street that has an 80-foot right-of-way with the same, uh, as you see over here on the sides, these are parked cars on either side and a median with, with trees down the middle. This is a plan of the same uh, uh, street. Now, so as far as implementation is concerned, uh, the strategies that we have studied uh, to implement this is from f through funding and financing, which is, you know, you have the tax, uh, uh, possibilities, the developer's fees, the public-private uh, partnerships, and the bonds that you could sell. Uh, assemble and prepare the land is very important because you have some landowners who agree to the plan, some who don't. And then governing and managing is, of course, the developing the steering committee, uh, uh, which has already been done, the a special project manager for, for the project, and uh, of course, the design review board for all projects that come in for review. And then the, you know, the capital, the projects, basically the projects themselves, where you've got to uh, emphasize certain things is to make sure there's an integrated stormwater system that matches the master plan that Carl described, and also uh, rebuild the streets uh, uh, based on our, our uh, concepts. Um, with this, I would like to thank you for your attention. I know it's been a little longer than than we said, but uh, 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 there was a... Uh, Thank you so much. And <laughs> also, you. he has the posters in the back afterwards if you want to go look at them a little bit closer. Um, so um, after you've, you know, uh, discussion this, uh, this evening, um, I would like to have your recommendation to approve it so we can bring it to the CRA board. Um, Where are we approving? The conceptual master plan, which, by the way, I think you because it, it just read. This is like 180 pages, so I didn't want to have to kill a whole tree. It is on the website. It is on northmiamifuture.com slash Chinatown. Once the master plan is finalized in terms of no other tweaking needs to be done from, you know, the CRA board next week, Tuesday, then we'll be able to print it out and have it um, for, for anybody who, who needs it. But it is on our it is on the northmiamifuture.com slash floored slash Chinatown website and you could download the web the, the master plan and so on and, and read it. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I Does anybody have any questions? Oh, okay. One one la one last comment, I apologize because you know I'm always full of information. Who's on the design review board? We don't <laughs> Perhaps we'll you. leave that to the city, right? We'll leave that to the city. <laughs> so, right. So, <laughs> just just for you, I'll go have to think about it again. But Same it's thing with the residential. It needs to be so, added. put that on your to do list. Right. So, part of actually, just the. Actually, I want to respond to any questions to Sarah. Actually, in, in our master plan, we. We, propose, we we suggest that the design review board established to be a like a board to help the vision moving forward and they have to make up with the right right set of, of experts you know make sure that we don't we don't cheese it up you know I mean things that we do have to be authentic things that we have to do to have thought meaning not Disney world so that require kind of diligence and sustained interest and expertise to help the vision forward and that's it's on your shoulders so. your shoulders sir but just to bring up uh, uh, a couple of things one it is in our interlocal that within the next five years we need to invest three million dollars on streetscape improvements um, in uh, on northwest 7th avenue redevelopment so that would be at the cra commitment additionally Again, any new businesses or any developers that come in to apply, the existing guidelines that you had approved in June are the guidelines that they would be using. So it's not something that's um, you know different or anything. It's the existing business attraction grants, it's existing developer incentives that you, you approved as a board that is available to everybody. Whether it's on 7th Avenue or on downtown, it's the same thing. Um, if there's not any other questions, would anyone like to move to um, approve this? So moved. Second. So moved. Um, in favor say aye. 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 Okay. All right. Um, agenda 
Gentlemen, thank you very much thank for you coming so much. for your presentation. Very nice. Thank, thank you. you. Very, very nice. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So item number three, update on the interlocal, the third interlocal cooperative agreement. Tomorrow morning at the Board of County Commission, our item is on the agenda. We had sent you an email um, letting you know of it. It's item 1188A. Um, of course, the manager, myself, our CRA attorney and our city attorney will be there. Uh, Mr. Reynolds has said that he'll be there as well. Anybody who wants to attend, you're more than welcome to attend. You could also watch it on TV. Um, we hope um, that the um, district commission does not pull the item and that he leaves it on the agenda once. If he leaves it on the agenda and does not pull it once they set the agenda, it's, it, it passes. Um, but if he pulls it, then you know we will be there to answer any questions that or comments that he might have. Um, another um, point that I wanna make is because this item had already passed the committee, the Board of County Commission Housing Committee, in June, we are not allowed, meaning staff, or we're not allowed to present the item. We're only there in case somebody has a question and a county commissioner calls us on the mic. There's um, also no public comment. There's also no public comment because, again, it was approved at the committee level. And the committee, again, uh, is not like residents and business. They're county commissioners. It's Commissioner Edmondson, that Levine Cava, Jordan, Moss, and I forgot, I think um, Martinez. So it already went through committee and they already approved it. So because of that, there's no public comment and there's no presentation allowed. It's only if they have any questions that we can, um, like, like ha what happened the last time, the manager gets up and he answers any questions that they might have. So you're gonna text us and let us know? Yes, anybody who's interested, I'll be there first thing in the morning to see what the poll list says. If we're not on the poll list, yay, but if, you know, after the presentation, they, they decide to pull it. I will text everybody and let you know, but we'll be there. Okay, so that was pretty much the update that I wanted to provide you. Um, I'll, I'll be presenting for the executive director. May I keep going, Mr. Yes, Chairman? Please. Okay, so the North Miami CRA is receiving an award. Uh, we are being recognized at the, at the F Florida Redevelopment Association annual conference. So we're getting the 2017 FRA award for a best market positioning plan. Um, this is the plan that you all had approved and we have been implementing and I have attached in the back of it the, you know, the presentation that we, we sent to showcase what it is that we're doing and how we're doing it. It shows the rebranding, it shows the new grant programs that we've created, you know, the, the business retention um, and capacity building mini grant that we did for existing businesses, the business attraction grant and so on and so forth and all these other um, projects that we're gonna be working on, which is the banner, the website, and so on and so forth. So um, we will be getting an award. I will be going up, it's the week of October 17th, but the dinner is October 19th, a Thursday night at Daytona Beach. Uh, the manager and I will be there all week. Um, I think Councilman Desulme and Councilman Bienname will be coming up Thursday night to accept the award in Daytona Beach. Um, I have. Uh, well, if you come, if you want to come, yes. If you want to come, it's not a problem because they, you know, like other people show up because it's closer. They'll show up as a group. But I did ask them to consider coming to the city um, after the award presentation in October, come in November at a, one of the city council or the CRA board meetings to give the award locally, so we can have a little bit more press, so they can see that we're, you know, we're doing something good here. So I wanted to share that with you all. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you very much for your comments and feedback when I asked for it. So without well, that, you know, we wouldn't be thank here. Thank you very much for all your work. Thank and you. thank everyone who's been involved with the CRA since we took a new direction, so to speak. And uh, I think that this award is the culmination of the cha good changes that we've made. Yes, no, so I thank agree. you, thank uh, you. Roger, well deserved. Thank you, thank you, and thank you to you all. Um, and lastly, um, we are required to post a calendar of meetings um, for the advisory committee and the CRA board. It will be in the Miami Herald this week and it will also be on our website. It's again, we're open to the public. I'd like to tell everybody that sometimes I get questions like, can I come to the meeting? It's Everything is open to the public. You're more than welcome to come. So um, barring any holy holidays that I've missed, the you know, and the meetings will be set first Monday of every month at 6.30, and those are the dates. And the CRA board is every second Tuesday of the month at 5.30. Um, and that is the conclusion of my report, Mr. Okay, Chair. Thank you very much.
I don't see any public here for comments. Is there any old business to come before us? Any new business? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Okay.